Hey everybody, Christy Glass here with a finished object for you. And I have not been this excited about a finished object in a long time. And it's because it's a pattern that I wrote myself and I am so thrilled with all of the different things that this pattern can do. So I originally designed it with the Moondrake DK Weight Mohair. And I will show you a picture of that here. And what was so much fun about this is I could take the mohair and hold it double to make a solid stripe or I could combine it to make a marled stripe. And I put this all together in the friendship train because to me it looks like fun train tracks. And it was just an incredible experience to design this pattern and to knit it up with the Moondrake DK. Now, as I was working on this, I was also acquiring a lot of gorgeous hand spun yarn from Sumi and Me, from Jessica's Rabbits, and from Little Fern Fibers. I will link to my interview with Ellie of Little Fern Fibers underneath this video and also the haul video. So what she does is she takes your ends, like clipped ends of yarn, and she takes your wool or roving or whatever you have, you send it to her and she returns it back in a skein of yarn. So here's an example of one of those skeins. This is one of the skeins of yarn. So it's art yarn made up with all of your scraps and your wool. She takes everything you sent her and she organizes it into an artistic piece that makes sense and then she makes yarn. So this particular skein I didn't feel went with all of the skeins that I collected to make the finished object which I still haven't shown you but I'm about to show you. So this is the odd one out and it's still a gorgeous skein it just wasn't going with the color story that I was putting together. Another example of hand spun art yarn is this. I got this at a local yarn shop. It's from Art Artisan Knitworks. It's merino, silk, uh, Firestar, bamboo, and Surrey silk. It's hand spun by Kitty Rogers in Michigan, and it's 169 yards. So this, it's hard to get so much hand spun that you could make, say, a single sweater. Hand spun usually comes in small batches. 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, something like this. This is actually a jumbo skein, but it's still not enough to make a sweater, but it is enough to make something incredible. So if you have skeins like that in your collection, bulky skeins, art yarn skeins, then this is the project for you. Here it is. This is my hand spun friendship train, and I love it so, 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 so much. So maybe you can get a sense for each stripe here. And I had to include two stripes, well, there's actually three stripes uh, with mohair. So I had some extra mohair actually from a different project and it was very similar weight to the Moondrake. And because this friendship train started out with mohair, I wanted a few stripes of that in here. So I included that as well. And instead of doing tassels, which I did in the original friendship train, I added fringe because when you switch colors, there's always an end to weave in here at the bottom. So if you don't want to weave in the ends, just make fringe instead of tassels. It's so incredible. Now I cannot tell you specifically the yardage on this because I just weighed the yarn. Hand spun yarn can really vary in the weight because some of it is spun really lightly and some of it is very dense. For example, this from Little Fern Fibers is much denser than this one, also from Little Fern Fibers. This is a lot lighter. And then this Sumi and Me feels lighter than this Jessica's Rabbit. So it's not a great judge when I share the grams with you. I should have shared the number of yards, but I didn't have the yardage for every single skein because art yarn can be special and sometimes the label doesn't have the exact yardage on it. So I did use 516 grams of hand spun and I used 10 grams of mohair. Just to give you an idea, that is the weight of the piece. Now when I did it in pure mohair, I had just a little bit left over after I did the tassels and that was about, I think it was 50, 450 gram skeins. So that's 200 grams of mohair. And I believe the yardage was around 110 for each skein. I'd have to go look it up again. But it is kind of tricky to figure out exactly how many yards this was because I didn't keep track. But maybe the next time I do one, I will keep track for you so you can figure it out. Anyways, I wanted to just show you that what's great about this is you can use a scale 
to weigh your yarn as you go. I was just kind of using my eyeballs. So I looked at all the different skeins I had. I had, these are a few from Jessica's Rabbits. This one didn't make the cut into the shawl. This one did. I ended up holding this double because when I held it single, it wasn't holding this, the bulk the same way that the hand spun was. So I just, I held two strands together. So you can see this is that stripe right here. I held two strands together there. But the rest, I just had sort of smallish little balls of yarn because they were 30 yards, 40 yards. So I would start with a smaller stripe and then say to myself, okay, well, if I have this small stripe, I will do the rest of it at a medium stripe and then see if there's any left over. So for example, here's the small stripe and then here's the medium stripe. And then let's see if it shows up again. Yep, I had enough left over to do another smaller stripe here. So I was just kind of eyeballing it to see how much I had left. I never had to frog back. I, I eyeballed it correctly the whole time. I cannot tell you how that happened. Now one way to plan this out is to take the center stripe. If you have a yarn you want to be the center, that's the biggest stripe. So you're going to have to keep as much yard as it as much yardage as you can for that. So I knew I wanted this yarn to be my center stripe. This is the Little Fern Fiber skein that she made out of all of the roving from my unicorn sweater. So I did not use that until I got to the center. And then I did have enough to do the entire stripe. So I waited until I was here in the smaller stripe section to bring it back to use the rest of it. And any leftover I had, I used for fringe, but it doesn't even look like I had any leftover for fringe. So that's one way you can plan it out. You can think, okay, maybe one small and one medium per skein. Let's examine another one. So this one is my bunnicorn. Here's a very small stripe. Then it comes back here in kind of a small moving into medium land stripe right here. And this is just one skein. Let's see if there was enough for it to show up later. Ah, uh, yes very end at the tip. So you can see how that one got spread out. This from Sumi and me right here, I wanted this to have a nice long stripe too because of the special stuff going on here with the gold and all of these locks. So it shows up here for the first time. And then I had enough to repeat actually two stripes here, here and here. So it was really fun challenge to just have all of my yarns laid out and try to figure out where they would all fit in nicely. And then at the end, I filled it all in with fringe. So I did try to match where I could. I just added in some yarn if I had extras. And then I just went rogue and I actually included a little extra mohair from my stash that wasn't even in a stripe. So for example, this orange, right here, this wasn't even in one of the stripes. And that's okay too, because there's so much going on in this shawl, you can really add to it. I do recommend blocking this piece because it does tend to just be a little smaller than it needs to be. And when you stretch it out on the boards and give it a nice wet block, it grows in a delightful way. So I love that in itself, it's just this piece of art and such a great conversation piece, but it's also really warm. You can actually wear it as a nice, shawl. I have worn it out in transition months, like from winter to spring, just right here over my neck to give my little dog a walk. And it keeps me so delightfully warm. And I feel so cheery and just so happy about it because I think sometimes we think our special hanks of yarn, like a hand spun or something like that, they're just too precious to use. But I feel like this pattern is the best pattern you could use it for because it showcases each yarn in its own little stripe. There it is, there it is. And I just loved how this turned out so very much. And Jessica's Rabbits is actually a company that I think is great for this pattern because her yarn is so special and it's hand spun. So this is 40 yards of super bulky, galpaca Galpac and bun is what she calls it. It's $28, so this is a small little skein, $28, but it's so special and gorgeous and beautiful. And it belongs in a piece like this where you can talk about it and you can tell the story of each skein of yarn, where you got it, why it's important to you. It's also a rather fast project. It's on size 19 needles. So it's really satisfying to sit down, have this creative explosion as you're combining the different fibers together and then have your finished object in a relatively short amount of time for you to enjoy. For that reason, I also think it's a great gift pattern. You could make some of this in just a few days and you don't have to have hand spun. You could actually mix 
a ton of different yarns from your stash hold them all together on a size 19 needle you could make incredible fabric and i really think it would make a beautiful gift so the pattern is available it's called the friendship train it's available at the knit and escape website in our shop and i will link to it underneath this video so you can get your hands on it and just do some experimenting and make some incredible fabric and fringe and make someone's day with a hand knit item thank you so much as always for visiting me here at christy glass knits and i'll see you next time bye Thank you.